find the angle x below. Now looking at this triangle and this circle, let's check this triangle A, D, C. Now from the point C and D, we can see a line moving from C to A, another line moving from D to A, and it forms angle 62 at the circumference of the circle. Similarly, from the same point C and D, we have two other lines. This one moving to the center, and from here again, it also moved to the center. So when you have a case like this, where lines originate to the circumference, and from the same point, two other lines originate to the center, there is a relationship between the angle formed at the circumference and the angle formed at the center. And that relationship is that angle at center is twice that at the circumference of a circle. So that means this angle COB, don't forget, follow the letters COB, which is the angle that I've just marked here, COB, sorry, COD, sorry. COD is equal to twice angle at the circumference because this circumference here has this angle at the center. So I have 2 multiplied by 62 and that will be equal to 124 degrees. So that means this angle here is 124 degrees, this angle. And don't forget the rule again is that angle at the center is twice that at the circumference. And don't forget again that the lines going to the circumference must also come from the same point and go to the center of the circle so that they will be related with this theorem I just stated, that angle at the center is equal to twice that at the circumference of a circle. So now we have 124 as the angle here. Now looking at this triangle, this triangle ODC, this triangle now, if you check from the center of a circle, O is the center of the circle, from the center of a circle to the circumference is a radius, don't forget, the radius of a circle is a line from the center of the circle to the circumference of the circle. So this line here, OC, is a radius. Similarly, the line OD is also a radius because it starts from the center of the circle and comes to the circumference of the circle. So this line OD is also a radius. So since we have this triangle here, where these two sides are equal, it tells us that this triangle is an isosceles triangle. So triangle ODC is an isosceles triangle. And the base angle of an isosceles triangle are equal. Don't forget that theorem that says that the base angle of an isosceles triangle, they are equal. So from there, we can obtain the value of these two base angle here. Now, how do we get that? The sum of angle in a triangle, that if you add this angle and this angle and this 124, it should give us 180. The sum of angle in a triangle adds up to 180. So if this is 124, the sum of these two remaining side has to be 180 minus 124 and that will give us 56 so that means the sum of these two remaining angles should be equal to 56 so since they are equal because they are the base angle of this isosceles triangle since they are equal how do we get each of them we simply say 56 divided by 2 that will give us 28. So that means each of this angle is 28. Here is 28. 
and this other angle is also 28 degrees because the base angle of an isosceles triangle are equal. So now that we have this, that means we should be able to find this complete angle here. Don't forget this part is 30 given to us here. We know this small part as 30 and we know this part now as 28. So the full angle here will be 28 plus 30. So that full angle becomes 28 plus 30. Let me write that down. So 28 plus 30, which is equals to 58. So the complete angle here is 58. So now that we have that, we can look at this triangle again. I mean, this is a figure again. And we see that A, D, C, B. Or we can go serially and say A, B, C, D is a quadrilateral. And a quadrilateral that all the sides or all the angles are touching the circumference of a circle is called a cyclic quadrilateral. So quadrilateral A, B, C, D is a cyclic quadrilateral. And there's a theorem that says that the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180. That means the opposite angle of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. That is the rule. That is the theorem. So I state it again. The opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. When we say are supplementary, it means that when you add the two angles together, it gives you 180. So, since we know this full place as 58 now, don't forget this full angle is 58, as I've written here before, 58. So now, 58 and X are supplementary angles because they are the opposite angle of a cyclic quadrilateral. These other two sides are the other opposite angles of the quadrilateral. So this X and 58 are opposite angle of this quadrilateral. So they sum up to 180 because they are supplementary. So I'm going to say X plus 58 is equal to 180 degrees because they are supplementary angles. So from there, I now have X is equal to 180 minus 58 and that will give me the final answer as x is equal to 122 degrees as the final answer for x so please don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you can enjoy more videos like this explaining mathematical theorems and mathematical principles for easy understanding. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.